Sorry, Lucas and I were just kissing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind us. Don't mind us. We're we just, are just making out. We're just casually banging right here. <laughs> we're just a casual bang is going on on this podcast. Yeah, we just, as opposed to a more formal bang. Exactly. We don't like formal bangs. Yeah. Like, you usually start with a formal bang. I like a casual dress. I like a, a dress code not happening at my at my bangs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, loafers. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 what is it called? Uh, I want one I can bring my Crocs to. I just need to buy Crocs first. I like this idea that when we have sex, our clothes remain on. It's just like different clothes based on the circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like we're ever naked during sex. Yeah, no. I uh, did I ever tell you what like I originally thought butt sex was when I first heard those words? No. Uh, please tell me, and then I want to tell you a story about the first time I heard what butt sex was. Oh, good. Okay, so when I first heard the words butt sex, I think it was like late elementary school or middle school, but I thought it was literally just two butts smashing into each other. <laughs> I Isn't thought that it what was, it is? I th- I, of course it is. I yeah. mean, if you look it up, Wikipedia, reputable resource. Reputable resource. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, remember I thought teachers it was were like, you butts. can't look up Wikipedia. You can't yes. use Wikipedia, which is crazy because it's Wikipedia so good. is basically a school paper that's yeah. done correctly. Exactly. Yeah. The first time I heard about, uh, I wouldn't even say butt sex so much as um, sex between two. <laughs> butt love. Butt love. <laughs> But nurturing partnerships. Making but love. Ma- it's- making love is a gross expression. I, I hate it. I always hated it. Yeah. You don't need to create love. Love exists. Love is a verb. Love it's, is a verb and action. It's not a product. You know what's not a verb? Sex. No. Sex is... <laughs> Sex is a commodity a as it should be. <laughs> yeah, sex is a commodity and a sin. Yeah. Uh, my friend, shout out to Victoria, my best friend from middle school, uh-huh. uh, was like, do you know how two gay men have sex? And I was like, I don't. And she was like, okay, guess which hole they put it in. And for some reason, butt didn't come to mind. So okay. I just guessed like every other hole. <laughs> I was like, do they only do oral? She was like, no. I was like, ear <laughs> she was like how would that even work and then she was like no they do it in the butt and i was like no way i was so scandalized oh my I god i could not believe it i think i was like 12 and i was yeah. just well because you know well because you imagine you just naturally you imagine your own butt like opening for something i was like that that doesn't sound nice yeah <laughs> i mean i scary had never thought about my butt in any context as an opening yeah, I just thought of it as something that existed. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine? Wait, this is. Can you imagine the first person to ever do that? To use the butt for sex? There was a first person. I I can't imagine that. And you know what? I, I like to believe that maybe. Well, uh, no, never mind. I was going to say something stupid. Wait, please say I was it. Gonna, we may cut this out, but uh, no, we okay, are not it? cutting this okay, out. Okay, You're okay, going to okay, lose okay, your okay. mind. Okay. All right, all right. I all was right. thinking. They probably did it in the butt before they did it vaginally. But then I was like, but then how did they make people? Yeah. <laughs> how did they make two men? <laughs> there were there were there were pussies before there were humans. Yeah. I actually don't know <laughs> how okay. I want to get philosophical for Okay, a let's second. let's get philosophical. Let's do it. Did they ever teach you in evolution how the human species was created? Because I don't remember. Well, first off, it was created. This is a creationist podcast. Yeah. We support the Noah's Ark theory. They 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 didn't eat each other. They the all food had chain did sex not exist. on Noah's Ark, and exactly. that's how they got people. Absolutely. So, yeah, uh, creation, very important. Okay, no. But uh, they, <clears throat> I mean, you just, like, learned about, like, evolution in science class, and you learned that, like, you know. No, like, I did. I just forgot everything. Oh, you just forgot everything? I learned I went LaGuardia wasn't like a creationism school. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. Also, side note, could you imagine the drama on Noah's Ark? Like you 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 get these animals together 
who all don't know each other and are of the same species. And you get two of each animal and maybe those two Wait a second. Each- all that don't know each other, it's famously just two per species. Yeah, but all the species don't know each other. They're all the oh, same Oh, yeah, arc. that's true. Yeah. So they're like, oh, hey, I'm a rhino. Oh, I'm a cat. Like, nice to meet you. Like, they don't know each other's <laughs> ways of life and ways of being. And who knows that the two rhinos even know each other just because they're both of the same species. It's, a little it's like getting to, to college assume- and you get to redefine yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the rhino's like, uh, I prefer to hang out with the cats. <laughs> yeah, was, exactly. Sorry if that makes they, me weird. The rhino always wanted to in high school but never had the courage. It was like, no, this is who I'm going to roll with. <laughs> <laughs> they probably had extracurriculars. <laughs> probably had like rhino yeah. quidditch. Oh, my God. Wait, no, but that, that does remind me that I was... um. I was watching the Ricky Gervais show, which cool. like originally was a podcast, which is hilarious. But um, they as were, all great art begins, all as. great art begins as podcast. Da Vinci, his paintings, podcast, podcast. origins. <laughs> he just <laughs> talked into a mic and he was like, "So uh, this man has eyes mm-hmm. and they're shiny yeah. with a little glint." And uh, imagine my brush <laughs> making. <laughs> it was like an ASMR. Yeah. podcast about pointillism yeah is that what he did probably yeah, the not. mona lisa he was just like all right so there's this bitch and <laughs> you would not believe this girl you would not uh five things about her number four will surprise you um <laughs> uh, scientists hate her this woman <laughs> is always staring at you why that's so shocking and she looks like she's smiling but she also commits arson <laughs> does the mona lisa commit arson i don't know she looks like she does she looks a little sneaky that's uh yeah true what was i saying um <laughs> <laughs> fuck oh the ricky gervais show yes he's, okay yeah thank you um so yeah they were talking with like carl bilkington they were like hey carl do you understand like um what evolution is like and he was like yeah i know that it was like it went uh uh like bacteria fish mermaid man Bacteria, fish, mermaid, mermaid man. man. As like the way evolution Ooh. went. And they were like, no, it's not. And then they like, they got to talking. <laughs> Sounds right to me. I honestly. mean, well, you, well, I, I know we talked about the aquatic ape theory, that documentary, yes, how insane that was. But, um, but another thing that like, um, they were asking Carl, like, Carl, how do you think that Noah's Ark, how do you think that worked out? Because like the lions would have eaten the gazelles, the, like the, the frogs would have eaten the flies like the food chain would still be taking effect why wouldn't they have all eaten each other how did they all survive and he said because in a crisis you pull together (laughs) so that's evolution (laughs) yeah exactly. so that i understand yeah what i don't understand is how i guess noah's ark was a crisis so they all pulled together yeah it was actually an mlm um (laughs) (laughs) yeah if you recruit six rhinos to the earth <laughs> your bottom line i don't know why i keep using rhinos in this equation i don't know maybe 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 your, your inner rhino is coming out maybe i'm getting horn mm. it feels like one of your videos like mm. why am i a rhino because i'm so because i'm horny, a little horny. Goodbye. goodbye nice nice this is how i write everything i just steal from gabby i'm his ghostwriter, people yeah you're like George Lucas's ex, uh, ex-wife who, like, is the reason Star Wars is good. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, no. You didn't know this? I knew that behind every great man is George Lucas's wife. Is a Lucas's greater wife. man. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say is George Lucas's <laughs> wife. She's behind everything. Yeah. Everything, like, name a great artist. Oh, um, uh, Basquiat. I don't know who that is, but you know who does know? George Lucas is Gabby wife. hates black people. Anyway. Oh um, my god, wait. Is it a black person? Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! Cancel me! Okay. Oh. This doesn't solve anything, but I do know other black people. <laughs> I do know other... Oh e- yeah? Name e- every black person. <laughs> Ever heard of Hank Aaron from baseball? No. Lucas hates black people! Racist! Racist! <laughs> self-hating oh, white-skinned God. motherfucker oh. hank aaron broke babe ruth's home run record oh i did not know okay cr- credit to him applause to applause to him applause to basquiat who yeah. then broke hank aaron's home run record yes exactly anyway so basquiat, basquiat was a painter he was and, and he's from he, brooklyn i believe yeah well you know pa- did all his paintings 
Who? George Lucas's wife. Exactly. Yeah, that's no. That's but the here's the thing about George Lucas's uh, ex-wife is that um, oh, she's now his ex. Oh well, oh they are long divorced. There's a lot of drama ah. in the Lucas household. Ah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but but basically, but well, it was. I think it's actually because of Star Wars that they broke up because he like he was so in the zone. He wanted to fuck the. Yoda. He wanted to fuck Jar Jar. Jar- um. <laughs> Not and she was like, "You should have picked Yoda. He's hotter and has more wisdom. He's hotter. <laughs> Yoda is sexy. You seen this baby Yoda? Oh, those pleading eyes. This is getting very pedophilic." <laughs> Even though he's technically 50. Everyone's infantilizing Baby Yoda. He's 50. <laughs> he's he's older than me. He's yeah. not a baby. What? If anyone just looks at you with pleading eyes, they're a baby? I have no idea how to answer. <laughs> yes. 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 That is my definition. Pleading eyes, you're a baby. I You're just looked at Lucas with, with, with pleading, pleading eyes. You call that pleading? That's nothing compared to Baby Yoda. Oh, g- give You're me some disgrace. pleading eyes. That was actually pretty good. <laughs> Lucas has pleading eyes, everyone. Just, That's what's up. If you're a fan of Lucas Arnold, no, it's because... I am a baby and I have tr- pleading eyes to be <laughs> reckoned with. No, it's because he tricked you. He put a spell on you with his little baby pleading eyes. <laughs> His little twinkly eyes. My little twinkly little little twinky twinky eyes. You I just called him a twink, I think. You just me He's a, twink, a little yeah. twink with yeah. pleading <laughs> eyes. Oh, yeah. No. Be- okay, before I forget, basically, a George Lucas's original cut of the Star of Star Wars was dog shit, apparently. Huh. Like, no one could get into it. It was all over the place. But his wife was an editor, recut the movie, oh. made it the classic that it is. Basically, we owe everything to make Star, at least like the original movie, we owe that to his wife. Wow. Interesting. And apparently a lot of film editors, good film editors that have like made movies that are incredible are women. You know, this is as maybe as sacrilegious as me initially forgetting who Basquiat is. I have heard that name before. I'm yeah, you that. forgot. You heard yeah. of him before. Absolutely. You're a big fan yeah, of I Basquiat. Yeah, I was a big fan. Name every letter in his name <laughs> is what you're saying to me. <laughs> but as sacrilegious. Wait, try to spell Basquiat. B-A-S. Okay. Hank Aaron. No. <laughs> a Q U. Okay. You're doing very well. I, yeah, a t. You nailed it. Yes. You. I am not kidding. You not nailed racist. the spelling. Not racist at all. You nailed the spelling. Wait, that's good. It's because I've seen his name. Oh, You're okay, out. cool. Okay, okay, good. Yeah. But uh, oh my god, now I lost my train of thought because I was too busy celebrating my victory. Oh, yeah, I had exactly. never seen the original Star Wars until recently. Like I watched it in really? quarantine. Yeah. You've never had like a really weird nerdy dude to be like, you have to watch it. Because that's that's what happens when you don't fuck men. That's true. That's what happens. And then I wasn't told. That's the position I have fulfilled many a time. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I have. I wasn't even told to invest in Bitcoin until a. a Whoa. One of the few. And now you're a crypto m- nut. I'm a crypto. I'm a crypto girl. You're a crypto. And by a crypto nut, I mean that. G X R L. C R Y X. Yeah. <laughs> T. Oh, I forgot the P somewhere. Well, it doesn't matter. The P is gendered. Yeah. P and, the, <laughs> P and V are gendered as letters because they, st- no matter what word they're in, they stand for penis and vagina. Yeah. So we need to get rid of the letter P and we need to get rid of the letter V. This is sounding increasingly more like QAnon by the minute. This so is, I'm just going to stop. This is leftist QAnon. Yeah, this, this is, is, God, this is like red scare shit. I got to stop. This is, yeah, this Oh, well, I hadn't been told. I, what to if we in- become the first podcast on the dark web? Ooh. Does the dark web have a podcast? Does it even have a podcast platform? I think it'd be so funny. Does to- Stitcher reach out to the dark web? <laughs> it'd be so funny to try and sell a podcast on the dark web. Hey, you may have heard of baby's organs. <laughs> You You've may- also heard of arms dealing. <laughs> now get into a podcast. You've heard of fentanyl. But have you heard of our podcast, Two Nosy Meerkats, where we talk to teenagers about their problems? Yeah. I think so. maybe people on the dark web looking for AK-47s or mm-hmm. whatever need like a little love from us, too. They do. They Well, everyone has feelings. 
Yeah. Everyone has feelings and they are and they matter. If you're a domestic terrorist If you're an arms dealer or an arms dealer. We're the podcast for you. Yeah. And you can come out as gay. Yes. I just want to add that like you I mean not right now because it's Christmas time. Save some room for Jesus. But Yeah, true. But after but after New Year's, come out. Come out. It's come time. out as gay. I feel like half of this podcast is us just being like, come out as gay, no matter who yeah. you are. Or, Even or if people, you're not gay. Or people trying to convince me that I'm gay. Yes, I feel like that does happen. I yeah. feel like in your comments, everyone's like, but have you tried it? Yeah. But have you tried There's it? also a lot of people being like, oh, what is his sexuality? And I'm like, you know what? I like this argument playing out. I'm going to let it. <laughs> I'm not going to correct these people. We've spoken about this, how you enjoy when people debate over who you are. I do. I really like it. I like I. I, I do. I, I like discord happening. I like fights of Bruin. I wow. like it. I See, do. I just... can't. It makes me nervous. That I think that's why I could never like handle the level of fame that you have. I think I cannot. One day, kiddo. One not day. that I can even attain it, but the, the, I you th- absolutely can. I mean, I do tell people that like you are very smart and talented, but it's not a secret sauce. You just work really hard. Like, yeah, I I no, I stuck it out for sure. Like a lot of yeah. pe- like if you have an iota of talent and you work like super yes. duper hard, you can do really cool things. And even if you don't have that much talent but you're just a really consistent worker, that almost means more than the talent. Yes. I do think it's like oh my god, what's that song? Like 10% luck, 90% skill. Oh, remember the name Fort Minor. Oh my god, I loved Fort Minor. And then the, the, they have the missing person song. I don't know that song. <laughs> it was um, I I'll find it. Wait, can I just tell you a, a, a an example of why I love sewing Discord? I love yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, so um, when I was in college, I had this hilarious professor, a uh, voice professor called Linda Gates. She also taught Meghan Markle. Um, oh, taught yeah. her what? How to be a princess? Yeah. <laughs> this is didn't you- work. <laughs> What if that's all anyone took away from the Meghan Markle thing? Like, well, she wasn't very good at it. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I can say. Not a very good royal. No. This is how you please a prince, Meghan. Let me show you everything you need to know. <laughs> just about blowing Prince yeah, Harry. Just... Well, she's great at blowing Prince Harry, but everything else a about special being skill. a royal, like wiping the queen's ass or imagine, whatever you have to do. <laughs> imagine graduating from college and you put in your special skills blowing Prince Harry. I've never done that's it. I just know I'd funny. be good. I would put that on my resume microsoft word <laughs> powerpoint and blowing prince harry and not <sighs> necessarily in that order yeah okay, but anyway so linda gates so linda gates yeah so she Bill. Um, yeah so she she was this great professor super funny so entertaining she had like so many stories from her past that she would regret she was great and um she told us that um in my junior year of college she told us that um uh, I, I tried to move this mic. It moves. It moves right back. Stupid mic. Anyway, but um, if you knew how to blow Prince Harry, you would have uh, that problem. Yeah, I just, I just suck the mic. Lucas towards just me. deep throated <laughs> the. Lucas just put the whole mic so far in his mouth that it went out his. It ass. went out my butt. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's pretty and awesome. And that was the first butt sex ever, boys and girls. Um. Anyway, Linda Gates. So I digress. Um. But yeah. So she she lived in the UK at one point, and she was like in a grocery store. She was buying. She was buying stuff and she saw a jar of Branston pickle, which is a kind of like spread you put on toast. And she was about to get it. But her friend was like, oh, Linda, that's so common. You mustn't eat (laughs) Branston pickle, (laughs) basically. And she was my mother. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, you you mustn't eat Branston pickle. That's my South African accent. Oh, yeah. uh, My South African accent is Gabriel, (laughs) which is my full name. (laughs) Gabriel, take him off. That's all I know how to say. That's all I've been told. Gotcha. So in my senior year, um, I was in World Market, and I saw a jar of Branston. I love World Market so much. And I saw a jar of Branston pickle. And I thought, and it was like close to the end of my senior year. And I remember, I knew that Linda had not had this in decades. I could just tell from the way she described it like the year before. And I thought, what a wonderful, nice little gift to get one of my favorite professors ever. Just like a little thing to say, I loved my class with you. And I, I thought it was a really nice gift. So I bought it and uh, I tried to find a time to like give it to like a friend of mine who had her in class just to like give it to her swiftly. But I it was just impossible to link up with someone. on, And so I eventually just thought, All right, I'm just going to go to her office and maybe she'll be there at her office. And so I get to her office and she isn't there. And then 
I have the idea of what if I just leave this here? No note, no nothing, just boop, right by her door. And I did it, and then I left. You love mischief. I love, I'm very mischievous. And and then a month later, I'm in my final show at college, and she comes to see it. And I get to see her before the show starts. And I'm like, oh, Linda, uh, d- did you by any chance like the, the Branson Pickle? And she was like, that was you? <gasps> And she was like, I was phoning up all of my friends from the UK. I was, I, I, no, there was no note. There was nothing. I was going insane for a month. And I was like, <sighs> oh my it God. It was perfect. You should never have told her. You should have let her think. I, I should have. For sh- all of time that a ghost put Branson Pickles on her Yeah, desk. Branston Pickle. Branston? And Branston. <sighs> I know. So much more, so much more uh, pretentious than Branson Pickles. Yeah. T is also gendered, I've decided, and needs to leave. Yeah. T is for... That's why I put my middle initial in my social handles, Lucas because I want everyone T. to know I am gendered. Yeah, you're so, you're the most gendered guy I know. very gendered. Lucas is so... I got gender coming out of my ears. <laughs> it doesn't matter which gender or which of the many genders. It's yeah. just whatever gender there is, Lucas has it. Exactly. Yeah. It's like HPV. What? <laughs> <laughs> Lucas definitely is. Oh my god. Okay, I. Googled. I do not have HPV. I got the vaccine. I got it when I was twenty-two. Oh, Luke. Uh, I googled HPV today. Oh it yeah. It turns out that seventy-five percent of the population in the United States oh, yeah. will eventually get HPV. Everyone has it. It's more common than oral herpes. That makes sense. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. But I—that's not my experience. I have oral herpes. I don't. Everyone has oral herpes. I, I don't, don't have HPV. Okay, brag, I haven't brag, gotten brag, around brag, enough. Brag, brag, brag. How's it feel to be God's favorite? Uh, I mean, I do you know what? Can I just say I just did like a hair flip? I was like, wait, which way do I turn with that? You don't even know because yeah. you're so gendered. I don't know. It feels it feels pretty good. It feels yeah. pretty good to be one of God's favorites. Watching a football game. How does it feel being so close with one of God's favorites, Gabby? <sighs> you know, it's nice that to have been chosen, but am I... Do I perpetually wish God would come on me? Yes, of yeah. course I do. That's why you're God's favorite, right? Yeah. Because you let God come on you. You want to just get glazed by God? <laughs> I do want to. That's get... the antidote for oral herpes: is God's hot come. If there's a God, yeah. How often do you think God jerks off? Oh well. If God's all powerful, he has no refractory period, which is when it's a period from between which you can't come. So I think oh, yeah. what if it's just constant? That's the thing women don't have, right? The refractory right. period. That's why that's why multiple orgasms are a thing for <laughs> yeah, that's women. That's why lesbian sex lasts forever. Exactly. It's so nice. How when... do you get anything done? Well, the answer is we're in a long term relationship, so when it's over, we're just like, Oh my god, thank God I've shit to do. <laughs> it's like lovely. And then when it stops, it's like, well, Time to do some dishes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I, Wait, that can I just say that actually does remind me. There's on Netflix a documentary of um, it's like an anti circumcision documentary, and but here's sorry, how would you even show that without showing the actual circumcision? Th- they don't. They don't show you the actual circumcision. I'm imagining like you know those nineties documentaries. Bef- before I forget, before yeah, I forget. Don't, don't forget. Okay, Sorry. put a pin in that. 90s, whatever. But, like, I need to... <clears throat> I just pinned it really hard. I just pinned it so fucking hard. But, mm. um, no, but in this documentary, there is a dude who... <laughs> he's uncircumcised, and he pl- and he simulates, like, the back of his foreskin, similar to how he says you would a clitoris. And he says, oh, yeah, I have multiple orgasms all the time. So being uncircumcised is the key to having no refractory period? I guess. I don't know. But here's the thing. In the documentary, you think, oh, this is going to be a doc where I'm going to hear some like salient points about why circumcision is bad from like. St- but no one in this documentary is normal. No one in this documentary. There's no one who you're like, OK, this is a person I would invite into my home. Like everyone is is Kuka. <laughs> well, to me, it makes sense because, OK, we all know as normal people that circumcision's kind of weird. Yeah. But it's one of those things that's so weird and yet so commonplace that, like, nobody questions it because, like, it's like, 
if we've done this weird thing for so long and it yeah. hasn't had long term ramifications, it's not the patriarchy. It, yeah, it's not the pet cause to be taking up right now while the planet is warming. Exactly. That is true. And yeah. so in order to become like a person who's like, this is the pet cause I want to have. You have to be one of those people who's like, I love my foreskin more than anything in the world. <laughs> like, so about your face when you said that. <laughs> That's how they all look. It was so like, sincere. I love my foreskin. More, more than anything in the world. That's how they must feel. Like, they must have touched their foreskins when they were 11 and cried, like, what would life be like without this? <laughs> So I think that's they why must it, have lost it in a dream and then woken up and be like, oh thank God, oh thank God, oh, thank it's God. Still here. oh it's still there, oh the, the blessings. Friend, the friends of mine I have who I know of who are uncircumcised, like yeah, I've spoken to and they're just like, you know, it's a little extra cleaning, but it's not so bad. And yeah. then the friends of mine who are circumcised, we never talk about it for some yeah. reason. I ask everyone for their. <laughs> Do you actually? Yeah, of course. I feel like I've asked you and you said you are. I'm not. Oh, really? I'm not circumcised, no. Then I'm thinking of someone else. Oh. Think of all the other podcast hosts I have who I ask about their peenies. Okay. Their little who, who are Who are these people? Who are these people? Who are you, you see in, you see in podcast Lucas hosts on the jealous. side? Lucas is jealous. Lucas is jealous that I'm asking other people about their weenies. Who are you asking? <laughs> Gabby, listen. What if we got what if we got off the recording and you were like, Gabby, we have to have a serious talk. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna talk about this later. <laughs> off camera. Yeah. Lucas is holding a fist to my face right now for yeah. those who <laughs> oh, I, I oughta. <laughs> Yeah, with a, with his foreskin wrapped around him. <laughs> it's like a knuckle duster. <laughs> like a nunchuck. <laughs> oh my god or like or like david's like slingshot just like oh my god yeah i'm goliath yeah you're goliath <laughs> yeah can't you tell oh. i was gonna say i wonder like a foreskin documentary without like footage i mean if, yeah if they show be... you devices that people use to try to stretch out a new foreskin if you're already circumcised that's a whole cottage industry that i didn't need to know about just gonna go ahead and say i think that's a fool's errand yeah. I think there are better ways to spend your time. Here's it's one what, of those things where I'm like, touch grass. Here's what's crazy is that I remember there was this dude who like, I think he invented it, but he has like a small business where he like helps to like dudes regrow their foreskin. And he says. Literally learn to draw. <laughs> <laughs> but he says that he had a client who had like sexual dysfunction. And after he like regrew his foreskin, he was able to have sex, have a child. And he named that child after this dude. I thought you were going to say after his foreskin. <laughs> this is my son, Forsky. Um, <laughs> um, Guy Fox this, skin. Like the, t the teachers like reading out the names in school. They're like, uh, Sam here, uh, Lucas present. <laughs> foreskin. <laughs> uh, can I? When I was on Bumble, I, I was swiping through and I saw a woman's name. Her name was, wait for it, regular. <laughs> Maybe that's one of those things where people like change their names on Facebook. Oh, maybe. Because isn't like Bumble still like connected to Facebook? Or is that Tinder that was connected to Facebook? Um, Yeah, Tinder. Can I, yeah, you can connect to Facebook. Yeah, for sure. Well, I, I wonder in like yeah. 2014, in the dark ages, Tinder mm. used to be like you had to have Facebook to make a Tinder. Oh, yeah, of course. But now you just like, but now you just like use your phone number or whatever. And I like, mean, from what I yeah. understand, no one uses Tinder anymore. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I've been on it. I don't like it. It sounds horrible. It's not a good experience. I have I have had a better experience on other dating apps. And yeah. like Tinder just does not. There's too many people. There's too many. This is too numerous. <laughs> it's like a Mormon app or something. It's you like, could say that about the real world. That there's too, too many, many people. people. There's just too many people. You know, like on Hinge, when you, I've heard you like run out of people sometimes. That sounds nice. Sounds nice to <laughs> run out of options. To just be like, well, guess it's like me and my girlfriend. Like when we stop having sex, it's like, well, best guess we yeah. better go about our day. It's nice that there comes a point when you're like, I'm done with you. Just <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with you. 
goodbye it's over until 30 minutes from now when more people pop up yeah or when you're like i'm horny again let's bang <laughs> let's do this yeah uh. like, going on a dating app for what i remember is like and you know every comedian talks about the apps or whatever yeah, exactly. but it is it is a very singular experience to like like i remember being in my college dorm and mm-hmm. like there's this thing of almost like this social need of like it's it's more than like hanging out with a friend and it's mm. more than like going to a bar and meeting people it's like from the convenience of like your bed or like a yeah. couch or whatever you like go on your phone and you see these photos of people who like could be your future whatever and you yeah. have to get to know them in this small way mm-hmm. and i think that's like honestly what i found kind of cool about it and also kind of lonely about it and that's why i think everyone makes jokes about it because it's a very strange and new it is, human experience. It is strange, but at the same time, there is the added benefit that, it, like, if you go to a bar, like, I don't know how, like, what are th- what the chances are that you'll find someone that you're, like, compatible with or, like, has, like, the same, like, life goals of, like, but, like, with things like, <clears throat> with things like Bumble or Hinge, like, right in the profile, you can see, like, what their religion is, what their lifestyle is, like, what do they want kids in the future? These are all things that, like, are important Compati- compatibility factors and so in a way that saves like a lot of time so you can spend a lot more time with like people you're more likely to be compatible with so I think that's actually like a huge benefit that's true but then sometimes I remember it being sad like looking through people's profiles and thinking like god is this the world like is everyone just like a girl who likes coffee and that's their only <laughs> and is sarcastic and is sarcastic <laughs> speaks sarcasm fluently exactly does is that everyone is, just a girl who so like much. watches the office before bed like oh is, my god is you have that feeling of like i will never find love because that's everybody in the world according yeah. to this app and then you go outside you're like wait a minute <laughs> that's not true that is yeah i don't know i actually don't know like what Six, well, the thing is, like, I know that, like, divorce rates have, like, increased, and I'm wondering if it's, like... Have they? I, oh, I think they definitely have. Maybe in the pandemic. Well, maybe... people have to oh, live yeah. together, and they can't be distracted. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how uh, you do it, kiddo. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's called uh, mutual love. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> Gross, right? Yeah, yeah, gross. Girls, girls, cooties, loving Ew. each other. Ew, yuck! <laughs> it's called wanting to have sex in equal amount, which is only sometimes. <laughs> oh my god! I heard wow. about these two girls who like. So in my in my college, this uh, these two girls got together. Yeah. And they they both had this mutual friend who was okay. like a friend of mine, and this friend said to me one time, like, "Oh my god, Pam and." forget the other one's Pam. name yeah pa- i think it was some like old lady names like pam and joy or something like <sighs> pam and joy i don't think those are old names i think eunice and gladys are pretty old names <laughs> okay then let's call them eunice and gladys because yeah. i just use their real names and i feel bad about it <laughs> okay eunice and pam and joy eunice and gladys have sex six nights a week for hours at a time and that sounds tiring. She said it to me with this glee. Yeah. And I looked at her. I was like, that's too much. <laughs> and she was like, what are you talking about? Like, I masturbate every night. And I was like, I'm sure. For hours? Does she? I was like, yeah, but you don't masturbate every night for hours at a time. Maybe it's 15 minutes and you go on with your life. It's too long. And What listen- did she say after that? We disagreed very oh, vehemently. Okay. No, but does she? But does like she a, go for hours just on herself? She, like, no, she does not go for hours. We oh, didn't. We I didn't, thought that's where it was going to go. She was like, I go for hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We didn't. We didn't get. Like, My fingers a are callous, like playing it. the guitar. It's like <laughs> I play myself like a liar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't get in, like G a string more fight. like G chord. Ayo. Hey! Could you imagine we were like throwing things, like screaming at each other, crying, like blowout fight, like that is the right amount. <laughs> no, it's not. What are you going to do? Laundry. I hate you. What is, wait, what is the longest you have gone in one session? I mean, probably a couple hours, but like that's rare. It is rare. Yeah. Same for you. An hour and a half. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. great. 
for any, it was good. For any kids listening, I just yeah, say, this is we're this is uh, this is grown up talk. This ain't for you. This ain't for you. Well, but it is for them, right? Because what well, I want yeah. what I want to explain is that yeah, if you are a kid like 15, 16, and maybe some kids listen to this and they're younger, which like I don't know what your parents are allowing you to do listening. Yeah, to this. this is uh, yeah. But, but I'm glad. But I'm glad. Whatever. You're here. Yeah. Because I think. When I was a twelve year old, I didn't want to be condescended to. I wanted to. I wanted to listen to smart, funny people I mean, I talk did. about sex. But you, that's because of my kink. It's because of your kink. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I do to you. Off exactly. Camera. Exactly. I give him a little spanking. And you, and she tells me that I've I been say, a very naughty Lucas. I say, well, I, I'm more condescending than that. I say stuff like, "You sure about that?" <laughs> It's just like tepid. It's like tepid degradation. <laughs> Those socks with that pant? <laughs> <laughs> You're really not going to clean up right now? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's that's not how I would live my life, but mm. power to you. Spank! <laughs> <laughs> just like really violent physically, but just like the most tepid, like just little, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after I beat the shit out of you, I say things like, Okay, well, in that class, I got an A. <laughs> Remember that? People being like, what'd, I just, you, what'd you get? I feel like you would have been that person in the group project. Just Ooh, <laughs> that's a terrible one. Yeah, that's a good one. Remember, literally, people would like come up and be like, what'd you get? Just so that they could say they got a higher grade. I was you? that asshole. Oh, my God. I was that <laughs> asshole. I was. I had a massive inferiority complex. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> so what'd you get? I got a hundred, bitch. I got... A four on my IQ test. <laughs> okay, back to kids. Kids, listen. If you're listening. Yes, kids. I want you to know something. You may think you're ready for sex and you may look at pornography and images and things of that nature. But please know that probably the most you want to do. Pornography and any and image. images. <laughs> just Google image, image <laughs> and see what comes up. A flower. And you're just like, <laughs> I'm rock hard. <laughs> <laughs> George okay. O'Keefe who <laughs> so okay you're a kid you look up stuff yeah you look on. up stuff the most you probably want to do in actual practice is like touch a boob and if you want to do more than that find a sexual partner who is your age who wants to do the same things you want to do who is not and you discuss and you, you discuss everything with, with and you establish with consent on yes <laughs> you discuss everything with me yeah and Something else to note is that um, if you think you want to have sex for an hour and a half, please know that that may sound pleasurable to you because of your hormones. But in fact, when you grow up, you will realize that is a very rare circumstance because most oh, yeah. of the time you will be too tired to do that. Well, I think one of the best like analogies I ever heard of like describing porn as like a way to like model sex afterwards, it would be like imagining like trying to like learn to drive by watching evil knievel Ooh, that's really interesting oh yeah i think it's it's just like oh yeah no this is like this these are like the stunt masters of sex this imagine is like, learning to do magic watching chris angel well, no that works little... he's good <laughs> isn't it that you're not supposed to watch people be like so good yet what is that wait is that a... in like people... magic or in sex in in sex, like the people of porn are like the best at sex, yes. apparent, allegedly. Yeah, 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 I know. That's Although true. to me, it never looks fun. Well, you haven't seen that much porn though. They look sweaty. That's why I don't like it. They all look sweaty. It's like you like to only have sex in an air conditioned room. <laughs> I actually love having sex in an air conditioned room with my socks on. I, I do too, kind of. I like keeping my feet warm. I, like I do too. The body stays cold and the feet stay warm. Here's another thing, kids. The female orgasm is better Fake. when you have is is not real. Yeah. <laughs> and if you a man should never please you because he can't because there's no way for you to be pleased. You're never gonna get pleased. Just give up now. You're a shrew. Exactly. <laughs> I've been loving saying the word truly. True is a good word. It's a great shrew. word. I, wench is also great. Wench is a great wench word. Wench is a great word. Yeah, if you're a Shakespeare nut, you know. I've been yeah. calling Taylor Swift a do not kill me Swifties <laughs> just as a joke. I actually like Taylor Swift. I like her. I like her. Mm -hmm. I've been calling Taylor Swift a shrew because I think it's funny. That's good. Because how mad would she get? I mean, she's been called worse. 
No, I think shrew would be like one of the most insulting things you could say to her. Cause she doesn't want to seem like a shrew. I think I, in my mind, shrew is not that offensive. Like, how would you react if you were called a shrew? I would feel really upset. Oh, really? Yeah, because it's it, if I was Wait, called it, a, a wench, I'd be like, that's funny. Oh, you know, but like in terms, of, but in terms of like the ranking, I would imagine like bitch or cunt. Like that's way more harsh than I've been called a cunt, shrew. and I really don't mind. I think it it actually. Like, you know, when, when Trump said Hillary was like a nasty woman and then everyone started wearing the shirts. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I woman, think yeah. it would have been way cooler. If Trump, shrew? If, no. If Trump a was fucking like, shrew. If Trump was like, she's a cunt. And then everyone took this the word cunt and just started putting it on shirts. <laughs> I know that word. That's the problem with it is that Trump chose too niche of a phrase. He needed yes. to go something way more bolder and classic. Yes. And that's why that kind of like fell out of favor like in two months. People saying nasty woman because it was just like. Yeah. Got to, what do the kids say? Chuggy? Got Chuggy after a while. Yeah. We're back to Chuggy. We're, <laughs> we've looped back. Are, are we Chuggy? Oh, it's so Chuggy. We're so, I love being Chuggy. Chugga, chugga, Chuggy. Chugga, chugga, Chuggy. Oh, that reminds me of something yeah. else I want to address oh yeah yeah let's talk about it okay speaking of chuggy yeah last episode yeah you remember i made a comment where i said quidditch people were like furries yes so i want to clarify something and i know you will disagree with me and i want to hear your disagreement okay 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 i'm, I'm ready i didn't mean any offense because i actually love furries i did no <laughs> go on <laughs> yeah. lucas meant to offend all the furries i hate you they're shrews <laughs> they're shrews they're actually the opposite of shrews. Furries are amazing because they do not care how they are perceived. Because if they cared how they were perceived, they just wouldn't do anything they did. Yeah. Like Also, being very serious, do whatever the hell you want with consenting partners. As long as you don't hurt anyone, it's all fine. Yeah. Of course that's what it is. And of course we don't have actually any hatred or anything towards the furries i'm just the, saying that yeah. the quidditch community and the yes. furry community in a venn diagram is a circle but i didn't mean to say that that means furries are bad or quidditch players no i mean <laughs> <laughs> no go on <laughs> i thought you liked sewing discord sew it i do sew it <laughs> I'm a crochet it. Um, Weave I'm gonna the cro discord. Crochet the discord. Um, yeah, I don't. Ugh. I think. No, I think Quidditch is like kind of. I, I don't know. I never really like spent that much time watching it. I just thought I remember seeing them running around with like the brooms. It's I, so funny. And I thought that is hilarious that people do. But I thought, you know, what? this is like people expressing their joy and their fandom to something. And like as someone that was like obsessed with Harry Potter growing up, I have to look at that with like a little bit of admiration that yeah. they're like doing something that. Yeah, it's it's cool. And it's also weird that they let that like. In spite of, for all of, like, J.K. Rowling's, like, awesome comments on trans women that we all love, um, <laughs> the favorite thing that I love about her is that she came up with a genuinely good sport with, like, actual rules that kind of, like, make sense. Yeah. I like that you were like, the universe she created is all right, but the transphobia is the best. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> God. She comes up every episode because she sucks so much. <laughs> There's... There's no, I, I cannot even begin to fathom how she exists. I can't, I, I, I genuinely wonder what her thought process is when she like put that out. And also the merch, the like the women are women merch and, and all she that. She has merch? Oh, this, okay. This is genuinely like, I started reading the letter. I was like, maybe there's some doubt that like, maybe she doesn't actually have, but then I saw like the merch that was on her website regarding like non-binary people and trans people. I was like, oh no, this is She's light speed evil. She's monetizing it. Oh yeah. Wait, hold on. I need to, I need to pull it up because it Jamie, is. Jamie, can we pull Jamie, that up? Jamie, can we pull that up? Jamie, can we pull that up? Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah. That's my Joe Rogan impression. <laughs> my Joe Rogan impression is. <laughs> He's a really good singer, actually. Okay, we're looking at the Lucas is googling. Yeah, we're yeah. Looking up J.K. Rowling's. Um, oh, it's not even cute. Oh no, I haven't pulled it up. Wait, no, where are the like? Here we. Okay. Fuck your pronouns. <laughs> Do you think 
she came up with that? Or do you think a team of like ghost writers? Here's the thing. Okay. J.R.K. Rowling promotes anti-trans shop selling fuck your pronouns merch. And it also. Oh, so it's not like J.K. Ra- it's not like fuck your pronouns and also. I, I will. Gryffindor. I will. I apologize for uh for misinformation. It is not ho- her personal merch. Not her personal merch, but this is what she like. I'm sorry. Promoted. It'd be so funny if it was her personal merch. If you could wear, if you could buy like a Hufflepuff shirt, but it just said <laughs> "fuck your pronouns." <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. She's a deranged person. Anyway. Furries, here's the other thing about furries. I've never seen one look upset. Well, I've, I actually... Well, yeah, that's because they have the mask on. You can't see their face. Oh, they're crying under there? Yeah, <laughs> right. They're sobbing. They're just like, I don't know what I'm doing. My, my life, life is terrible. I'm only doing this because my dad wanted me to. <laughs> I wanted to be a doctor. But I'm from four generations of furries. Imagine like a dad like tucking in his kid be like, Good night, sweetie, you're furry, remember? <laughs> and then the kid throws off the fur suit. I'm leaving the house. In this house we're a furry. <laughs> Son, this is your dream. No dad, it's yours. <laughs> Imagine like a kid coming out as vanilla to their parents. <laughs> hey, mom and dad, I have to tell you something. Um, I like regular sex, <laughs> like missionary, sometimes doggy style, but not dressed as doggies. Do you yeah. understand? And they were like, what? And they like disown <laughs> that child. No son of mine <laughs> will not have a fursona. Okay, here's another thing I found out about the furry community. Cause it's just... all, we would accept you if you were a scaly, but this... A scaly? Do you know about scalies? Yes, I do. Oh, they're yeah. they're uh, the fish version of the furries, right? Yeah, well, any kind of, like, reptilian base, like, any sort of... Any scale, like... Do you know if there's beef in the community? No pun intended. Um, I don't know. I hope... I... Well, my God, what if there was, like... Romeo and Juliet, but set in the furry versus scaly universe, like the Capulets and Montagues of kink. So <laughs> imagine that scene where Leo DiCaprio and Claire Danes are looking at each other through the fish tank. But as it turns out, Leo is looking the at the scales were on her. The fish. The whole time. <laughs> the whole time. Yeah, the scales were on her. Oh my God. Romeo and Juliet could really be anything. Yeah, they're, oh, it's so applicable. Yeah, yeah, it's Shakespeare. He knew what was Shakespeare up. knew what he was doing. That guy knew what he was doing. Not many people say it is, but Shakespeare, cool guy. Cool guy. Yeah, we know him personally. Mm. We should get him on the pod. Yeah, we should. Uh... He's busy selling arms on the dark web. <laughs> Shakespeare sells merch. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck thy pronouns. What's crazy is Shakespeare, like in today's world, like definitely would have either been amazing or just done something like really that sullied our whole opinion of him and isn't that so sad to think about it does make well also leonardo da vinci like he like had sex with boys underage yes there was they all did yeah they all it was the thing to do i think what's that victoria justice meme i think they all Oh, I don't. I've never oh, saw that. Oh, it's so camp. I'll show you after. It's okay, a, okay, okay. It's from an interview where the cast of Victorious, like Ariana Grande and Victoria Justice and some other people who honestly don't cancel me, but I don't remember who they are. They're all talking about how much the cast loves to sing, especially Ariana. Mm-hmm. They're three of them in a row go, Ariana loves to sing. Ariana loves to sing. Ariana loves to sing. Okay. And then out of nowhere, Victoria Justice goes, I think we all sing. <laughs> And it became a meme, like her face in that moment being like, I think we all sing. I'll, sh- I'll show it to you. It's really funny. Okay. But I, th- I think the, the thing is, I think we all had sex with underage boys. <laughs> but Aristotle Oh, did my God. It. Someone's going to make that their ringtone. <laughs> sex with. You saying that right now. Canceled again, Gabby Jordan Brown. Not again. <laughs> it's gonna happen what if you try to get canceled on every single platform you got twitter down it's like assembling the infinity gauntlet i'm sorry <laughs> but twitter is how you cancel someone it's impossible to cancel someone on instagram i'm sure it's happened but there's i think it is it possible there's too much other content people yeah look at on that is true my instagram explore page i don't know about yours is yeah. 
I live a simple life. It's baseball, cats, the Bachelor franchise. Okay. A couple of memes. Uh huh. Recipes. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. Mine is pretty much it's like. Oh, uh, some comedy. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I. It's like uh, some of the thing I'm pursuing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's like there's like some like famous like people that I follow, um, and uh, like comics and stuff. Maybe um, I like I really like PC builds. I like people that make their own computers. Oh, I love I think those. That stuff's so cool. I want to do is. it at some point. Yeah, and then just massive tits. Yeah, I figured that was true. Yeah. I was out with my friend last night and he was like Like boom, this pop this popped up on my <laughs> Oh yeah, good yeah. tits. Yeah. And my friend was like, What are you talking about? My explorer's all boys. Like all like just not young boys. <laughs> He's <laughs> not pulling an Aristotle, just like guys. Like, pulling an Aristotle. He, it was my shyest friend. Uh huh. Well, he's not shy. He just is soft spoken. And at one point, he said the word because I asked him what thirst traps he watches on TikTok. And he said he watches the ones where, quote unquote, the schlong is swinging around oh in the gray, my. in the gray. Oh, boxers. oh, those. Yeah. I... It, it, like in the boxers, like when you're like, like you're walking towards a hot tub or something. But the way it was phrased. No, set the scene. What what's what's playing in the background? <laughs> um, what's what's his name? Um, penis to Milo. Incubus. Yeah, penis to Milo. <laughs> I was gonna say Incubus. Remember them? No. Okay, what I'll, is that? I'll choose another band. Um, remember Flyleaf? No. Switchfoot. <laughs> Three Days Grace. Were you were you into uh, a <laughs> rock for sad thirteen year olds in two thousand seven at all? So no. Lincoln Park. I've heard of Lincoln Park. Okay, Lincoln Park is in the background. <laughs> okay. And the, the the this is so not what these traps are anymore. The guy is coming into his hot tub. Mhm. And he's just in his boxers. For some reason he's not wearing a bathing suit. Okay. And he walks into the hot tub. And then the hot tub becomes a time machine. Oh. And he's transported to the year five okay and he meets some dinosaurs and he knows no one around is gonna watch so he makes friends with one and then consensually he and the dinosaur have sex and then all of a sudden like the dino comes up to him and says hey i don't know how to tell you this but like i'm pregnant (laughs) and he's like oh my god i'm gonna be a father but I have a whole other life in 2021, like, and meanwhile, all of this is being recorded on TikTok, the whole thing, like, <laughs> it's, like, still on TikTok, okay, and okay, everyone's, okay. like, watching, they're, like, what the fuck, why is, he <laughs> in, why is he in the year five, and the dino's, like, yeah, like, I'm gonna have a baby, and he's, like, okay, I love you, I support you, no matter <laughs> what, let's do this, and then the baby comes out, and it says, um, it doesn't really say very much because it's fucked it's up. It's half dinosaur. Yes, it's half dinosaur. It's like, kill me. And then he just suddenly creates a new like race, like species of half dino, half human people. And um, this is the this is it's the, actually kind of a beautiful story. Honestly, this is actually like the ideal ending to like the furry versus scaly, like Romeo and Juliet Romeo kind and of Julia. thing. Yeah, yeah the, that takes place in that universe. Anyway, that's the kind of thing my friend watches. So, yeah. Um, meanwhile, cool. I just watch okay. uh, Bachelor Nation. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. Ama- I will say, I find it hilarious, like how many times, like, uh, you and our guest uh, over multiple weeks will talk about the Bachelor, and I just sit there and I'm like, okay. Oh <laughs> yeah, but I hope the fans like it because the Bachelor, I think, is fascinating. It's one of the most overproduced reality shows that okay. is out there, and I think that that makes it really interesting to talk about because part of the conversation is like how much of this is real mm. it doesn't I, even happen on other reality shows like I did on see, G- bake off they actually make the cakes i did see on bake off they actually oh yeah that is true no bake off is like perfect amount of production crazy if they're faking it <laughs> <laughs> it's all pre-scripted it's all <laughs> They're all just hired actors. It's like it's like uh, the Aquatic Ape uh, documentary. They're all paid actors. Yeah, yeah. Even the mermaids. Yeah, no, but I did see a clip of Billy Eichner 
uh, interviewing that one bachelor who came out as gay. Yes, I remember that. And uh, I forget what he's talking about. He was like, uh, he's like, I feel like you're going to come out as gay. And the dude is just sort of like chuckling along like, <laughs> and like you could see it in his eyes that he's like, do I? Yeah. Ooh. That guy is fucking weird. The the gay. I don't know anything about him other than that, uh, that he like came out as gay after going on. Well, he like stalked his ex-girlfriend because it was like his last attempt what? to be straight. <gasps> yeah. Oh, no. And oh, then, no, 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 no. And then he got no, this no, platform and first like to, to have this Netflix show. And for some reason, the way that the Netflix show is structured, I haven't watched any of it, and I don't think I will, but um, you know the skier Gus Kenworthy? What, say that again, sorry? You know the skier Gus Kenworthy? I do not know. Um, He was this, like, he's this, like, hot guy who came out as gay in, like, 2015. Mm-hmm. And randomly, he's there as Colton's quote-unquote gay guide to, like, being, like, a white guy, gay in L.A., and they like have all these conversations where Colton's like, "Wait, what's this?" It's like so insidious and just like the bo- like the bottom feet. Like this guy's so dumb and so like just white and privileged. And I like, don't like he this. He stalks his eggs. Like it's cr- it's beyond. Don't Jesus. watch this show. Okay. Unless you want to know how to be like a white gay in L.A. <laughs> a white gay in L.A. <laughs> Unless you need tips to be a white gay in L.A. Well, who doesn't know how to be a white gay in L.A.? Step one. I wrote the book on it. Yeah, Lucas knows. Exactly. There, if you rearrange Lucas's name, it <laughs> the letters L and A do appear. Yes, those are my initials as well. Wait, side note. Speaking of arranging letters, I saw a okay. post today that said, if you rearrange the letters of Delta and Omicron, it spells media control. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta give credit where it's due. That's a good that's word mix up to funny. come up with. That's funny. That's really good. <laughs> this conservative woman is sitting there like, all right, time to arrange some. Imagine today. how satisfied you would have been if you came up with that, though. Uh-huh. If you if you were rearranging the letters and you were just like. I mean, how many like failed attempts did she have to go through? Oh like, my god, she's been at this for like almost two years. <laughs> like she, she definitely went through iterations where it was Trump, like, COVID, er, Trump, Corona, er, er, just like, yeah, like it, she was using like Delta and Omicron, and it was like ugly cracker. No, that's not right. Kobe, Australia, damn it, no. She's <laughs> trying her best. Oh my oh god! Oh my god! That uh, Deb. Okay, props to you. You you've 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 seen through the matrix. You got it. Yeah. That was good. Should we do uh, listener submissions? Let's do it. Um, All right. I got uh, uh, I got the ones that you. Got... you... Okay. Cool. Yeah. Listeners, if you have not listened to any of our advice yet, continue not to because you're making a wise choice. But we are gonna give it anyway. Okay. Got this first one. Do you want to do it? Yeah. My partner and I faked some COVID sick leave for that paid time off. Woo! Now, before we get judged too much, no, it's not as bad as you think. We both work for huge corporations as part-time workers. I woke up with symptoms one morning, and because I had work and we had just seen some friends, I took a rapid test that came back negative, so we both knew it was just a cold. I told my work I wouldn't be coming in because of said cold, and my manager put me on 10 days isolations because... I said I had a cough, despite also mentioning negative test results. Oh, so you didn't really lie. No. My partner wondered if their job would also do the same for them, and lo and behold, we both got put on paid isolations. We both got a lab test for COVID that both definitively came back negative so we could attempt to go back to work sooner, but neither of us decided to submit said test results and are now waiting out isolations. So yeah, I guess we didn't technically fake COVID, but rather found a loophole in our corporation's COVID protocols. So friends, if you don't want to work, fake a cough and let a big corporation pay you not to work. I mean, that's like a good little, I mean, it's, this is, it's a weird thing because I don't think they did anything wrong, but they had the worst of intentions. I think they're like, they were like, oh, I'm way to put it. Yeah. They're basically like genuinely, like if you have a cough, it's a good thing to like err on the side of caution. Maybe go, hey, I don't feel like I should come in today. I don't think I should do this thing we were planning to do. That is a that is the right thing to go with. And so but and so she this person like ended up doing the right thing, but for the wrong reasons, which I which I support. 
I think that's beautiful because I think before COVID, do you remember how germy like office spaces and like shared spaces were? Do you rem- do, do you remember how were you shocked when you heard people on the news say, OK, we're going to be cleaning the trains for the first time? <laughs> <laughs> wait, I do remember. I was, I was just like, wait what this well, is I, the... knew th- I knew they never clean the trains i didn't know that they could clean the trains you know it just like that was so far away yeah. from my mom uh, i mean i never thought about it but once they said that they were gonna start cleaning the trains i was like ah it was like i was just thinking oh i've touched everything like i've sat on these seats i then sit on like my couch that i'm sitting where right now and, oh like, yeah it's, it's a thing like am I... i'm amazed i have not gotten bed bugs ever yeah, for sure. I am amazed. At my college, these kids did a study and they found out that like there were like pathogens discovered on train cars that like had actually never like been been recorded in science. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Did you also know that apparently like if you go just to like in your back garden or in like a supermarket where you have like a bag of like dried mushrooms, chances are you will be able to find an entirely new species of mushroom in like the bag. And it'll be edible. It'll be safe. But it's like a new species. It's a new kind. There's like discovering all the time. Oh, that's really cool. I think it's cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I guess to this listener. Yeah. You didn't really fake anything. Like, yeah, I think companies are really germy and gross. And I think you should stay home when you're sick. Even exactly. If it's not COVID. Stay home, bestie. Stay home, girly. Stay home, girly. Yeah. Stay home, bib. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. I'm concerned about visiting family over the holidays that refuses to get vaccinated, mm. even though I've received my booster. Mainly it's for their safety, but I also don't want to be berated by their harsh words about uh, me receiving the vaccine. I'm just frustrated and having trouble rec- uh, reconcil- reconciling? reconciling the love I have for my kin and the absence of care for others. My unvaccinated fam. I... Ugh. My unvaccinated family members continue to flaunt. Any similar experiences or advice? Thanks for from a longtime pod listener, fan, and first time caller. Thank you very, very much. This is I, I think a lot of people are going to relate to this. Yeah, I think you you've got a little bit of experience in this department. If you want to jump in, I do, but I also don't, because the thing is like in terms of like family that oh my dad is that what you meant? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, my dad, like, anti-vaxxer, I had to... But the thing is, like, I, that's an argument I've been having for a while. And I just... He he never really made me feel bad about getting vaccinated, except for the first time when he found out. When he, like, yelled at me and shit. But, like... What did he say? Did I not tell you this story? I know that you self-vaccinated yeah, well, when what, you were, like, 18. And I know when I was that he 18, didn't yeah. super approve, but you never told me, like, what he said Okay, to so, like... To my knowledge. I it was know. in, like, the summer of before me going to college that I told my mom, I was like, I want to get vaccinated. And she was like, 100%, go for it. I support you 100%, go Thank for you. it. And um, because it was more my dad that was, like, persuading my mom, like, we can't do it. He was like, we can't do this. And um, I didn't talk to my dad about it. And then when I... So I got my vaccines like just a couple weeks before college. And before then, I had said that I would be willing to be quarantined when I accepted the offer to go to this college. And um, but I called them up. I was like, hey, I just got my vaccine, so I don't need to be quarantined anymore. Yay. And they were like, awesome. Uh, When you're here for orientation, just swing by the health center, drop off your medical records and you're good. I was like, cool. And so I got my medical records together in a folder. I was at an orientation activity and then I walked with my parents over to the health center. And as I was handing the folder over, my dad was like, what's that? And I realized I didn't tell my dad why we were there, nor, nor that I got my vaccines. And he was like, ah, I was like, oh, I got vaccinated. And he threw a full on tantrum in the middle of like the lobby of this health center. And like, he was just like yelling statistics at me about like how vaccines fail. And he, he, I remember at one point he said, if you just did a bit of fucking research, he said that really loudly to me. And I was like, I did. That's why I did it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But, um, so yeah, that is something that my dad, um, that we just, he, he was good about uh, distancing and, and being, and being separate. Like he. He was good about doing that, but um, the vaccine, he was like, well, I'm going to look up to see if, um, uh, if you know, the risk factors are worse than COVID itself. I'm going to see which is worse, you know? I was like, geez. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, in a way, it was kind of a lost cause. I knew that from the beginning. I was like, this dude's 77. He's not about to change yeah. his mind on vaccines because of this. I wouldn't know, I think, 
what to do in that situation. Well, like, first off, people with that have gotten fully vaxxed and with the booster are still at risk. Like Kira Knightley, she like her husband and two kids. I saw they got they all got COVID. Oh my God, I did not expect you to say that. I thought you expect I, I expected to hear like the name of someone I knew. And then I had a moment of like, is, yeah, you know, it's, it's my is best Kira friend. Kira Knightley, Knightley a comic? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know she runs that mic uh, at the creek in the cave. Kira she hasn't been presents. <laughs> Unfortunately, Kira couldn't make it this week because she's cause she has COVID. But yeah, no, no, but she, they're all boosted up fully, and they got COVID. So if you are worried, genuinely worried, err on the side of caution. You it, may be boosted yeah. up, but yeah, it's funny because I remember like when COVID like really took off. When I first started taking it seriously, it was when it first started blowing up online, yeah, yeah. when it first dropped, you know, the yeah. COVID album, I SoundCloud, I, when the SoundCloud dropped, I I first started taking it seriously when I found out Tom Hanks got it. Yeah, 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 that was big. Because to me, it felt like a lot of these diseases, like rich people, can get away from. And in a way, I almost right. think that's maybe why COVID has gotten the attention it has. Because, it's because famous people got it. Not even famous people, just like. There are so many diseases that get ignored because, like, they seem to only happen to, like, a certain population. Like, think about Flint. Like, Flint still yeah. doesn't have clean water. And, like, people are I mean, going back in history, that's a reason why the AIDS crisis was ignored for yes! so long. It, like, like, marginalized populations when something Absolutely. happens. Like, like, people aren't as swift to act. But I feel exactly. like when Tom Hanks got COVID, when Keira Knightley gets COVID, it's like, whoa, that's, like... Yeah. And, and the idea that it could happen to anyone and there's nothing you can do to protect yourself except yeah. like take like pretty drastic measures like is something that scares a lot of people in a way it maybe wouldn't if it felt like something you could prevent with like money or you know i know status and then it's sad yeah it makes me twitch it's 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 scary it's yeah. really it's scary to because this is like the first time in a, a lot of our lives where we well not the first like of course like 9 11 is a big thing but it's it's another example a, of the rare 11 <laughs> luke only lucas can yeah it's like smoky the bear vaccinate yourself against 9 11 <laughs> 9-11's contagious. You can spread 9-11 to anyone. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Two native New Yorkers making 9-11 yeah. jokes. This is, but, but seriously, it's like how many, like, truly, like, horrifying things happen in your life that are, like, really make you feel vulnerable physically? No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. And it's... Exactly. I guess as for this to this person, it's like because this is so new it's like you have to maybe do the thing that makes you uncomfortable which yeah. is you're it's so true that there are a lot of anti-vaxxers who are probably never going to change their minds oh yeah and also probably will say that because they didn't get covid that that it that's the reason it's all a scam or something like that it's confirmation bias it's like when you believe something to be honest i haven't gotten covid this whole time and i'm starting to have doubts on its efficacy i think this is all a simulation just run for me and that you're just a figment of my imagination and that ever and that the simulation is just trying to fuck with me oh my god he figured it out i figured it out guys oh my god <laughs> he figured it out everything is a yeah. simulation or Lucas. Yeah. That's why you haven't gotten COVID. You're the main character. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the main character can't get COVID, mm -hmm. obviously. Exactly. No. <laughs> That's why. It's... Or can't get 9-11. <laughs> the main character can't get 9-11. I can't get 9-11. <laughs> You're immune. You're immune oh. to 9-11. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know if we helped at all, but I think that's all. That's oh all we God. can do. Just, uh, uh, I guess, be safe and don't get nine eleven. And yeah, uh, I hope your family comes around. <laughs> I hope so too. I wish you the best. All right, do you want to uh, read this one? Sure. Yes. Boom. Hello, Meerkats Incorporated. It is I, Bobby. Oh, this person was it's actually an LLC. So uh, yeah, we're Meerkats LLC. We're a limited liability loser, company. loser, cock, <laughs> limited liability cock. I think this is the person who wrote in asking about the uh, the Secret Santa gift. Oh, Remember okay, the okay. Necklace. Okay. Um, I think Ada has like oh the rainbow shit. 
the rainbow necklace and all that shit that you got from a co- is that no 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 that's uh that was from my coworker who gave oh, me a okay. rainbow balloon or rainbow bag this is the one who ryan advised to give like a necklace to oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay his okay, crush okay. yeah uh i think ada's like my gift so far she wore the gemstone necklace when she got it and more recently she wore the earrings i got her last friday mm. by the time y'all read this it'll be past the third gift how many gifts are you giving her but i will update afterwards It is hard, but I will try my best to make it to the computer center in this nursing home I live in. This person has a crazy life. What the fuck? Also, would y'all say y'all love each other as friends? What a non sequitur. What? Well, I used to love Lucas, and then you got me this weird gemstone necklace, and I was like, you fucking freak. I thought Amethyst was your stone. (laughs) Yeah, I got his birthstone wrong, and he kicked me out of the house. (laughs) Oh, my God. I have no I'm idea where to begin. I'm shocked. I'm in shock. This yeah. this is like okay, what the fuck? Isn't there a spending limit on Secret Santa? You like can't get past. Yeah, the generally it's around like twenty bucks or so. Yeah, so I think I think men like don't give her any more get like. Yeah, you need to get gifts. Not, yeah. This is a two way street, baby. Also, get yourself gifts. Exactly. Treat yourself. If you're buying gifts, buy them for yourself. Exactly. Do not ever get another person to wrap them up put them (laughs) and then unwrap them yourself actually like buy yourself something and then wait so long to open it that you forget what it is (laughs) (laughs) so it becomes like a nice surprise oh wait oh my god what if like you like what if you like smoked a bunch of weed and then wrapped a bunch of presents yourself and they were like, I have no idea what these are going to be. <laughs> that sounds like fun, actually. <laughs> I think I'm going to do that. Yeah. Thanks, you Lucas. Can do that. Yeah. This so, is why I love this guy. Yeah. As more than a friend. Mm. Mm. I can't tell if that's what this person means. Is he like, do you, are we, do, are we coworkers who podcast together? Or friends. and the I other, have no idea the what the other, purpose of this is, really. I think he wants to know about our relationship, which yeah. is fair. I mean, yeah, I consider you, like, one of my closest friends in I comedy. I adore you. I love you. Yeah, I love you, too. I would also say that, like, if any meerkats are like, what do they talk about off camera? It's like this. Like, all of our conversations <laughs> Oh, are... please. There's no time for talking while we're just 69ing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know how I had time to talk with this dick in my mouth. Exactly. It's rude to speak with your mouth full after all. Um, <laughs> mouth full of cum. That's a joke. It's not full. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because I don't make you have enough cum? No. Was that a <laughs> sentiment? I was trying to make Are like... Are my blowjobs bad? <laughs> I was trying to make like a tiny dick joke. I was trying to do one of oh, those things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, exactly. that's not a joke. That's real. It's a real medical condition, Lucas. Exactly. It's actually really insensitive for you yeah. to bring that up. I'm I'm sorry for you. You should also not bring up my in my too large clit, <laughs> which I just brought up. I yeah. Well, now we have to talk about it. It's it's. Uh, Does it's, it speak to you? Yeah, I have a talking clit. It really rubs people the wrong way. <laughs> no, it likes to give people a taste of their own medicine. <laughs> my clitoris talks like an old timey smoker. <laughs> someone starts going down. I mean, never someone. bet on black. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play the slots until they banned me. <laughs> Kiddo, never go to Vegas. It changes you. <laughs> Lucas is going down on me like, what the fuck is she saying? I just hear like an echo down my, down the, my like gullet as it's just like blasting its you thoughts. You are what? We're talking about disgusting things, but the thing that's been most off-putting was the use of the word gullet. Gullet. <laughs> the gullet. That's a horrifying I word. was like, I need to say a different word besides throat. And I was like, gullet came to mind. I was like, that's what I'm going with. Gullet. Nancy Reagan had a big gullet. We haven't oh even spoken about God. Nancy Reagan's gullet. Throat. Goat. Queen. Throat. Goat. That pepper Throatus. grinder. Throatus. <laughs> I love that so much. Throatus. It makes me happy that this all came from Ben Shapiro's sister trying to uh, slut shame someone else. Is that where it came from? Yeah. It he... came from Classically Abby? Uh, oh, my God. Have you watched her content? I have not. I have. I've seen a video or two of hers. So I'm like, what's the deal? I mean, she's just like, char- she's sharing her like conservative woman thoughts. That's just her. Conser- now, that's a shrew. That is a shrew. Uh, Abby Shapiro is a shrew. The, yeah. Yeah. 
A, a, a shrew is someone who's like, hey, ladies, if he beats you, that's your fault. Oh, yeah. You you are aware of, of like this subgenre of the Internet. They're like, I don't like I don't like classically Abony. Abony. I don't. Abony. Abony Hall. I don't like classically Abby, but those Ashkenazi tits are just like they they say that. They People just, say the same about Tommy Loren. Not that she has Ashkenazi tits because she's definitely not Jewish. No. It'd be so funny if she was secretly Jewish. <laughs> But people say the same about Tommy Loren. They're like, I don't like her, but she's hot, which yeah, I don't agree with. To me, she looks like a... I, she doesn't look like someone I would want to spend time with, and that immediately makes me think she's not hot. No, she just has a dark energy. Yeah. A dark she looks. Soul. She has an unsafe energy. Ann Coulter, on the other hand. Smoking. Is that what you're trying? She's like a little hot. Like, she's a horrible person. Oh, I don't think she's hot at all. I will say, wait, can I tell you like one toxic thing, a, per, a person who I actually think was kind of hot. I don't remember her name, but she was like the conservative candidate in France for prime minister there or president. Oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. I forget her name, but We're I remember thinking here. I was like, Jamie, she's hot. <laughs> Jamie, can you pull that up? <laughs> Jamie, yeah. I, I can't remember. And I tried looking it up the other day and I couldn't find her. But she like I think she ran it's against like Lepon, Lepon Quotidien. Le Pen. I, Le, Marie Le Pen. That's yes. it. Yeah. Thank you. Le Pen. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah, she's the inventor of that restaurant, Le Pen Quotidien. Yeah, she she started. And she yeah. put the titty in Le Pen Quotidien. There was just like there was an angle where I thought she's kind of hot. An I, angle <laughs> only from only from her side profile. Not yeah. The rest of her. The rest of her seen better days. Yeah, my I was, would say. Yeah. Um. <laughs> No, like here, she she doesn't look that bad. Like right there, that's I right. wouldn't call her hot. I mean, th okay, that's that's a better angle. Mm. <laughs> Are you just like shaming my choices and my preferences? No, I did say Ann Coulter was hot not yeah. even two seconds ago. So I yeah, have that's no right bad. to shame anyone. Ooh, hair looks good here. <sighs> <laughs> she looks like very sunken inward. Like, she looks like her soul could evaporate at any moment. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She looks like she's a wisp of air. And I don't mean in a skinny way. I mean, like, her, <laughs> it looks like her... A skinny queen way. Yeah. Her facial features will, like, disappear in a wave of, like, hatred of the Jews. <laughs> I can't describe it, but it's just an abstract thing that I feel. <laughs> oh, my God. So yeah, classically Abby, great gal. <laughs> <laughs> we got to have her on the pod. Oh, yeah. It yeah. should, should be great. She'd oh. be a great guest. Should we do one more? Yeah, let's do one more. Okay. And I have the mic in my face, so I can't do face ID. Um, okay. Uh, do you want to read this one? Sure. Yeah, go okay. for it. Hi, my name is Michaela, and I'm a Catholic girl who was raised in a Catholic household. And I'm questioning my sexuality. Correct. <laughs> As she should. <laughs> I'm questioning my sexuality and think I'm pansexual. Whoa. I'm pretty sure my dad is homophobic and my mom is supportive but uneducated. Ah. And my brother has a severe lack of understanding, but I think he's supportive. What do I do? I live in L.A., which is a very welcoming place for those who are queer. I go to a very fruity school. By the way, I'm in early middle school. God, you're... You got a rough home life. Yeah. This is... Goodness me. Would you like to go for this first? Sure. Yeah. I, I also went to a very fruity school and had... That's how you became gay. That's how, yeah, the school made me gay. Exactly. I had a similar situation with parents who, like, were supportive of other gay people around, but maybe, like, were a little weirded out by the fact that I wanted to be. Well, I didn't want to. <laughs> I wasn't you had like, aspirations. Please, God, make me gay. I, Hi, like, I'm an aspiring gay. Um... <laughs> Um, I'm applying for the gay position. I want. I'm. I'm applying to the school so I can get my certificate so I've I can be gay. I've heard that gays can have sex for six hours or what is it, six days a week for hours <laughs> at a time, <laughs> and that doesn't sound exhausting to me at all. I so. know you have to renew your license, but I was hoping we could like skip that for the first time. Like <laughs> <laughs> you have to get a license. To be yeah. Gay. Okay. Well, first thing, kid, get your license. Get exactly. your gay license. I don't mean your driver's license because when you learn to drive, you automatically get your become eye test. Not gay. Pay off an optician if you must. Yeah, pay. You have to get your certification. Exactly. And then you have to um, pass the the, the test. written exam. The written exam. 
<laughs> the written portion. You have to pass the written portion, then you have to pass the spoken por- portion. What if you, what if you had to like undergo like immense education, like converting to Judaism in order to be gay? Yeah, you have to take a mikvah. Yeah. <laughs> to be gay, um, you have to have a bat mitzvah, even if you're not Jewish, even if you're Catholic. I mean, she's Catholic. Yeah. But she has to convert to an um to to pan. Could, yeah, to the religion of pansexuality. To the religion of pansexuality. Yeah, this is. I mean, like, well, first thing, I, I would, I, I obviously like, I, not like the best person as, but I would guess like confessing to a friend, a close friend who you trust. That Confess would be the first it step. To a close friend, for sure, and you will be shocked at how much your close friend is like. I what? hate you. <laughs> <laughs> your close friend will be like, "Wish you hadn't said that." <laughs> No, when I told a close friend I liked a girl, she said it's normal and that it's okay to like be confused, which I like the wording of that rather than like it's okay to be gay because that implied that I knew. Yeah. I didn't know anything. I knew who I had a crush on. I didn't know yeah. what the label was. Exactly. And I would say don't worry about the label. People worry about the label so much they get lost in it. Like think about like who you have a crush on or who you've had a crush on mm. and – you could even phrase it that way. I might have a crush on this person. Yeah. And your friend will probably be like, oh, cool. What do you want to do about it? And they'll talk to you. Exactly. Also, oh, another thing is that you said that this is a, a sort of a fruity school. Maybe, maybe if you have a teacher you can confide in. Yeah. Find your gayest teacher. <laughs> yeah. Find a teacher who, whoever the musical theater teacher is. Oh, yeah. Um, Send him to jail and then <laughs> <laughs> confess to your math teacher. Because the math Accuse him of always- wrongdoing. <laughs> <laughs> then when he's in prison being like, hey, so I have like these feelings about someone. Um, can you help me? Get him in jail so that he can't leave when you're telling him <laughs> about your sexuality. That's it. And then call him every single day. We're all about closing those loopholes, baby. Close yeah. Close the loophole. And then coming out to your family, I would say a big mistake I made was that I did it in a very messy way where I did not. How so? Well... I told my sister first, and then she didn't like the girl I was seeing. I wasn't like, I think I like women. I was like, I think I'm seeing this girl. Okay. Um, And then my sister didn't like the girl, so she told my parents. Like, she didn't realize she was, like, outing me. But, oh. I mean, I love my sister. I don't care. I don't consider it, like, being outed. Like, I was always going to tell my parents. We hate you, Olivia. But, yeah. <laughs> Live your stupid... No. I My sister and I are very close. But my, I think my family then sort of perceived it as like this is an aberration and like this is this girl like manipulating you or something but i think that one thing i could have done differently is i could have been like so this is gonna be a thing like i'm with this girl and it's not gonna go back another way (laughs) like i'm not gonna i won't be with this girl forever probably but like Mm. i will continue to like people of the same sex yeah so i would say if you're worried about how your parents feel, it's probably better to like pull off the bandaid and just approach them and be like, I like whoever and I don't know how that's going to manifest. And like, mm. it's OK that you're uneducated. I'm uneducated, too. None of us are past a third grade reading level. It's also so important to say it. To, like, not put pressure on yourself to have all the answers at this point no in life. No one has all the answers. No one, many people take a, a lot longer to find the answers and some never do. What you do need to realize is being pansexual never goes away. <laughs> yeah. So you have to be, like, you cannot leave your family in any kind of doubt that this is, like, forever going to be your life. You no. have to just be like, I am pansexual and that's what it is. Yeah. And then... If you end up straight later on, they're not going to be like, well, you said, yeah. you know, Think, yeah, anything, anything can happen. Anything can change. You're figuring yourself out. Give yourself time. You're fingering yourself out. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was caught off guard. That was like... <laughs> so, yeah. Um, first, well, first off, I want to say that it takes a lot to just like talk about this, even just with yourself, let alone to reach out to strangers on a podcast. So I want to say like congrats for you having the courage to speak about this in thus far that you have yeah. and that that is a reason you should be very proud of yourself. So, yes, maybe speaking to a friend or a teacher that you trust and then maybe bringing it up with your family. But of course, do whatever you need to to be physically safe, first and fo- foremost. Yes. If you actually think they're like 
I don't know, going to kick you out, which it doesn't sound to me like that's the case. It sounds yeah. like they're loving, but like, you know, have a plan, like maybe tell a friend with a supportive family that you're yeah. like having that conversation in the event of the worst. I don't think the worst will happen, but if it does, like it's nice to be prepared. Exactly. Um, yeah. And pass the written exam. It's exactly. the hardest part. They ask you all these things like, oh, what? How many musicals has Raul Esparza been in? Study the syllabus Well, that's been a great episode. <laughs> The, um, study the syllabus. I hate myself, <laughs> and I hate you, and I hate everything. I am so proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Well, <laughs> Lucas and I are gonna take us out. <laughs> uh, think about that for a while. <laughs> study the syllabus goodbye <laughs> goodbye oh yeah um but yeah i think that's a like i think it's a good place to end yeah um have a good week don't catch 9 11 don't again again um, yeah you can get it more than once yeah <laughs> you can get it nine or 11 times <laughs> <laughs> don't catch omicron either but that's secondary yeah no um yeah uh, 9 11 is more infectious anyway um <laughs> Thank uh yeah this is fun this, this is was fun. fun and uh ne- and we are yeah we originally in case you guys are wondering why we didn't have a guest it's because like obviously omicron is r- a raging gabby and i have been tested today and yesterday both negative both times which is why we thought it okay to come together to do this uh episode stay safe and we will hopefully get back to you guys again uh with uh episodes with guests soon once it's safer much love yeah oh and look out for the christmas episode next. oh week. yeah it's coming out which obviously was recorded way before way before christmas so don't be betrayed that that's happening yeah and you're gonna be like these guys are eating these guys what the, what are they oh, doing oh yeah we ate bobka we oh, ate my chocolate God. bobka <laughs> I hope no one's like, did they record that right as the spike occurred? <laughs> it was so rewarding to see your reaction. It, oh, was, yeah, it was so, I was just like, super oh, stoned. fuck. Yeah. Um, I hope one day I make it to the transit museum. <laughs> one day. <laughs> one we'll day. make it to the transit museum one day. Sorry, this is, they're not going to get all of these references because the episode hasn't come out yet. Oh my God, yeah. Oh you God. will. You'll get it. You'll get it. <laughs> it feels right. like spoilers, but. Spoilers. If if you've gotten this far in the it episode, is thank so you for diff- listening. It is so difficult avoiding the Spider-Man spoilers. Because like people are posting clips from when they see it in the movie theater last night. I'm like, no, 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 no. The spider I didn't Spider-Man know No was- Way Home. What? The third Tom Holland one. There's a Spider-Man movie out? Goodbye. <laughs>